Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are a little past midway through the season. Uh, we're at July 11th preparing for the uh, amateur draft. The Royals are in first place in the AL Central up by four and a half games on the Chicago White Sox. So the season is going reasonably well so far. Uh... I know from some of the comments, some of you think we're not going to win this year and we should just kind of trade everybody away to accelerate our potential rebuild that we have coming after this season. But as I just mentioned, we're uh, four and a half games up in the division. Uh, look like we are well on our way to a playoff appearance here. Have the second best record in the American League behind only the Red Sox right now. So we are going to go for it this season, even though, as I know, and uh, some of you have alluded to, we're going to be a very different looking team next year. Our ace Spencer Bauer is potentially gone. Peyton Williams is potentially gone. Tim Anderson potentially gone. Gordon Graceffo potentially gone. Aaron Ashby, RJ Dabovich, and Mackenzie Gore among them. And then, of course, Bobby Witt Jr. also has a player option for next season that he could opt out of. So we could be losing a lot of the top players on our team. Um, and honestly, uh, we would potentially make a qualifying offer to Spencer Bauer. We would potentially make a qualifying offer to Bobby Witt Jr. But there's probably nobody else that we'd make a qualifying offer to. So there's a lot of talent that we would potentially lose. Um, with potentially only draft picks for two players coming back. So I get the point in trying to extract some value for those players right now while we can still get something for them. But as I said, we're in the middle of a pennant race right now, and uh, I think if this team gets to the playoffs, they've got as good a chance as just about anybody at stringing a few series victories together and getting to the World Series. So... Uh, we are going to be going for it uh, over the next uh, three weeks or so till we get to the trade deadline, unless the uh, team absolutely falls falls off the face of the earth over the next three weeks. You know, with something like a four and sixteen record or something, that might get us to think differently about the future. But even a four and sixteen, we'd still be above five hundred when we got to the end of uh, end of the month. So. I think we're going for it. It might not be the right long-term decision, but uh, this could be the last chance for us to be in the playoffs for a while. So we are going to make a run at it. And looking at some of those potential free agents, uh, Spencer Bauer, still looking for over $26 million a year for seven years for a guy who's going to turn 30 shortly and is fragile. Um, that seems like a lot for the Royals to potentially be paying. Tim Anderson, who's done a really nice job for us at a shortstop this year, looking for a one-year deal at $18 million next year when he's going to be turning 38. That doesn't seem like a great idea. Uh, Gordon Graceffo, who's been out um, since the beginning of June, so just over a month now, uh, looking for $15 million a year for five years. That seems a lot for a average-ish to slightly above average starting pitcher. Aaron Ashby, um, only looking for $4 million, so he's a little more reasonable. He has been a very important left-handed arm out of the bullpen for us in two different stints. Um, but you can see that at this point in his career, um, his stuff is only average, not a ton of movement in, in below average control. So he is not... Um, the pitcher he used to be, and you can see that showing up in his stats a little bit with a 4.60 ERA for us this year, which is more than double the 1.99 ERA he put up last year. So I don't think we'd extend him. RJ Dabovich, um, going to turn 32 years old this offseason, but he has had a really nice career for us. Uh, you can see he's been up with us since 2024 and has put up a 132 ERA plus and an 84 fit minus for us with three all-star appearances as a middle reliever. So he's really done well for us. He's looking for $5 million plus a year, though, for four years, heading into his mid-30s. I don't know that that's a great contract for the Royals to take on either. Uh, Mackenzie Gore has been an average-ish kind of major league pitcher. He's only looking for $2.2 .2 a year over three years. 
He's a lefty, um, probably going to have a role for a lefty, particularly if we move on from Aaron Ashby. Um, he's been solid this year with a 3.90 ERA, slightly below average, or slightly above average ERA plus, slightly below average FIP minus, uh, but he's been fine given the fact that he can potentially still start. Um, I might just try to extend him right now. Um, as I've talked about, we're likely to be down we're definitely going to be down Ashby in the bullpen. I don't see us bringing him that back. We're likely to be down Dabovich in the bullpen. And we potentially are going to be without Graceffo and Spencer Bauer in the starting rotation. So I think if we can bring Mr. Gore back at a regional, reasonable contract, um, we'll go ahead and do that. As usual, I am going to try to get him for somewhat less than he's looking for. He's looking for $2.2 million a year for three years. We are going to give him a average of $1.9 million a year for three years and put a team option into that last season for us, see what he thinks of this, and he's willing to think about it. So that's good. So maybe we'll bring Mackenzie Gore back. Um, and then if you're looking carefully, you'll notice the one player I haven't talked about is Peyton Williams. Um been a slugger for us for a long time at this year. Um, doesn't hit for much average. Brutal defensively. Not a real defensive position for him to play. Thought we were going to move on from him last season, but we did end up keeping him around. He's making about $10.5 million. He's looking for $11 million a year for two years. I don't want to pay him that kind of money, but he's also not somebody that we're going to make a 18.9 million dollar qualifying offer to because obviously he would accept that accept that so um Peyton Williams is kind of the one player who's going to be a free agent this offseason that I could potentially see us trying to trade before we get to the trade deadline uh the issue is um that there's just not a lot of demand for him you can see um Looking at prospects and regulars, there's only six players that are being offered for him, and you can see a lot of those are pretty mediocre players who are making a good amount of money and or uh, signed to contracts where they're going to be making a lot of money down the line. So um, not some great options for him in trade, but if um, perhaps the market for him changes a little bit, I would say he would be the one player that uh, is heading into free agency that we would consider moving on from over the next couple of weeks if we can throw him in to get a deal done or if perhaps his value looks a little better in a couple weeks than it does today. That is kind of the one guy that I don't think is a critical piece for us in our effort to get back into the playoffs. And with the backdrop set for what we'd potentially like to do over the next few weeks at the major league level, uh, take a look, and our minor league system is really average right now, so hopefully uh, we can bolster that minor league system and bolster some organizational depth here at the 2030 major league draft. Um, we're picking in the mid-20s. Um, let's take a look at who's available. And I was actually mistaken. We're not picking in the mid-20s. We're picking in the early 20s here at number 21. Uh, you can see there's some interesting players, at least according to our scouting director's potential available. Uh, closer Troy Ector is by far viewed as the player with the most potential. Um, you can see looks like he could have really good stuff, incredible movement, and good control. Uh, Two-pitch pitcher could have a very good fastball and slider. Durable, um, but not a lot of stamina. Um, Clearly a reliever, 22-year-old um, coming out of the University of Oklahoma. So um, probably not the direction that we will go. We will go. Um, Jesus Barreto is a center field prospect. Um, like the high work ethic, um, looks like he could play a competent center field, a really good left field, and a competent right field um just wish he would have a little bit more of an arm there but um it looks like he could also play first base he's six six uh looks like maybe a slightly plus hitter if everything develops with him uh he's 18 years old high schooler 
not an incredible prospect, but for the 21st pick in the draft, you're you're probably not going to get an incredible prospect. He's interesting. Uh, starting pitcher Jose Ernalia, a uh, college pitcher, 22 years old, out of the University of Tennessee. Like the high work ethic, like that he's got four slightly above average to good pitches. Certainly has the stamina to be a starter. Uh, the issue is... You know, when it all rolls up and you look at his stuff, his potential movement and his potential control looks like a very average-ish major league starter. But he also does look like somebody who could potentially be helping at the major league level by next year, quite honestly. He doesn't have far to go in terms of his development. You can see we already view him as a two-and-a-half star prospect. Uh, would be an easy signing. He's durable. So that would be a... Um, Perhaps a little bit boring signing because he kind of profiles as a fourth or fifth starter on a good team. But uh, given that we are going to have some gaps potentially in the starting rotation, we could be heading into a rebuild. And um, we're going to be always, as the Royals, looking to be economical with who's on our major league roster. Ernalia, definitely an interesting prospect to think about. We'll look at the rest of the players who our scout thinks has three and a half star potential. Jimmy Fowlo, third baseman, uh, high schooler, just about to turn 18 years old. Not great defensively. Um, looks like he could also potentially be a decent right fielder or left fielder not great because he doesn't have great range or error but he does have a big time arm um so he could be a third baseman a left fielder or right fielder certainly profiles as someone who could um deliver some pretty decent offense if he develops completely um his adaptability is low um but i think that with his underlying traits he could definitely become a right fielder if we needed him to um You know, you could also play him at left. You could play him at third if you has, have to. Love the arm. Um, not really good at turning a double play, but uh, that is not a huge issue at third base compared to what it would be at second or short. Um, definitely an interesting prospect. You know, like the fact that uh, there's a little more upside with him than some of the other guys that we've looked at so far. Looking at the rest of the prospects, Jorge Lebron, a right fielder. Uh, another high schooler just turned 18 a few months ago, potentially profiles as an above average hitter if he completely develops, like the fact that he's durable, um, not a great defensive player, you know, he's a left fielder, you could play him in right or center if you had to, definitely couldn't play him anywhere except the outfield, so okay prospect, um, Zenon Alejandro Mangalaya, starting pitcher. But looks like he is going to potentially have just nasty stuff. Um, potentially an incredible curve and change and an acceptable fastball. Uh, the issue is a fly ball pitcher and his movement um, looks like it's never going to be decent. So he would give up... Uh, an incredible amount of home runs. He's also got some work to do on his control. Um, definitely would um, lean towards Ernalia over Manjalaya if we were going to be going for a uh, left-handed pitching prospect. Uh, the last three-and-a-half star prospect, and it's kind of weird. Uh, just about everyone is durable except for Jimmy Fallow, the third baseman, uh, catcher Mario Saldana, um, average ability average arm defensively like the fact that he's durable looks like he could be a decent contact hitter uh, doesn't have a ton of speed pretty miserable power um, not all that exciting a prospect is I uh, as far as I'm concerned I think I would probably be leaning towards Barreto Ernalia or Fowlo but let's see what our scouting director recommends. And he says Fowlo. Um, I don't know that I can disagree with him. Um, as we kind of talked about, I, I, I like the fact that there's a little more upside in Fowlo's bat. Um, he could play both corner outfield positions eventually. could play third base. Um, a little short to be a first baseman, but generally we're not going to have a problem finding people who can play first base. So, um, 
you know, if his bats, if his bat develops, um, you know, the contact and the gap power are both really good. Decent base runner doesn't have great speed. Um, could be a average to slightly above average with homers walk kind of an average amount and not strike out very much. Um, it's obviously a crapshoot. Um, signability is extremely hard, which I don't love, but still only looking for um, recommended slot, which is five and a half million dollars. Um, Ernalia, as I've talked about, is an averageish starter at the major league level if everything works out. And Barreto is um, potentially a better defensive player, I think like the fact that he's durable, like his good work ethic, um, just not as good a potential bat. And he's also almost 19 years old, as opposed to Fowlo, who uh, is still not even 18 yet, going to turn 18 in a week or two. So uh, I think we are going to go in the first round here with what Travis Lee suggests and go ahead and uh, meet Jimmy Fowlo's demand for uh, the recommended slot and draft him for the Kansas City Royals with their first round pick here in 2030. And it's kind of interesting um, here in the second round, four of those uh, three and a half star players that we just talked about are still around, including both Barreto and Ernalia, as well as Jorge Lebron and then the starting pitcher Menjelaya. Uh, we'll see what Travis Lee recommends. I know what I'm leaning towards. And uh, he did not go with what I was leaning. I think I was leaning towards Jose Ornelia, who I think, as I've talked about, could be a fourth or fifth starter for us next season, potentially. I was leaning that way. He's suggesting the young right fielder, Jorge Lebron. Um, I do like his potential bat. Um do like the fact that he's durable. He's not great defensively, but he's an outfielder. You know, he's a corner outfielder. That's fine. Um, he's got some speed. He's good at stealing. He's a decent base runner. I think the scout may, may be smarter than me. Only 18 years old. Bonus demand, $1.4 for a second-round pick. Doesn't seem unreasonable. Um... Feel like we can probably always find an average-ish major league starter. It would be kind of nice to have one under team control for six full years at the major league level, like we would with Arnalia up until you know his late twenties potentially. But um, I think Travis Lee's got this right. Um, there's more upside with LeBron than there is with Barreto. I think LeBron is a better player. So although I hadn't mentioned him, I was kind of centered in on Barreto and Ernalia. I'm going to go with what Travis Lee recommends. Uh, we are going to meet LeBron's demand for uh, a recommended slot. And we will move on to the third round. I'm doubting that any of these guys are going to be available here in the third round, but let's see. And Barreto is still around. I was kind of hoping Ernalia would be around if there was anybody, but I guess it's because his bonus demand is so high. He's looking for five and a half million, so that's why he slid to the third round. He's just unrealistic with what he's looking for. Um, Scouting director doesn't recommend that we pick him. You can see there's only three three star potential players left at this point in the draft, and Travis Lee is suggesting we focus in on one of them, Edgar Luna, center fielder. Uh, good work ethic. Looks like he could be acceptable defensively, kind of at any defensive position in the outfield, but not great. It's going to be tough for him to, to stay on a major league team, though, with that bat. I mean, even if he fully develops, he's kind of a below-average offensive player. So, again, we're in the third round. You know, you're not going to find perfection at this point. But uh, not all that excited about Luna. Manny Ortiz, uh, starting pitching prospect, um, just doesn't look like he's going to have the movement to get there, and he's also got a lot of work to do on the three pitches he does have to be a three-pitch pitcher, so he's not that exciting. Uh, James Sanders, the last of the three-star prospects. 
Um, like the adaptability and work ethic. He's a lefty. Has the stamina he needs, and he does potentially have three pitches, um, but he's going to have to work on all three of them to avoid, and he's going to have to get all three of them up, you know, kind of to that 50, 55, 60 level to not just be a reliever. It does look like his stuff, movement, and control could all profile as him being a, you know, average-ish major league starter again a, a fourth or fifth starter at the major league level if everything goes perfectly but he does have the work ethic that could get there he's not yet 18 years old um just looking for slot i think um i think james sanders is the way that we are going to go here um we are going to go ahead and draft james sanders and get a uh starting pitching prospect to um, join the third baseman slash outfielder and the outfielder that we picked um, with our first two picks in the draft. So we're going to have to go and draft uh, James Sanders here at our third round selection. And even in the fourth round, uh, Barreto is still around. Although, no, I guess this is us again, and we're still in the third round. Um yeah, there really hasn't been too much that's happened. Um, we uh, we must have had a a pick that we got as a compensatory pick here because uh, we're picking again really quickly. Draft order in round three. Yeah, we picked at the 21st pick, and then we had a compensatory pick here at the 29th spot. So there's only been seven picks uh, since the last time we selected. So that explains why there's so many... Uh, players that we were thinking about who are still out there at this point. Um, Travis Lee still thinks we should go with Edgar Luna. I just don't see any upside there. Honestly, um, I don't love Luna. I don't love Ortiz. Barreto, we're not going to be able to sign, most likely. Um... But if we take Barreto here with that second pick in the third round and we don't sign him, we'll get a compensatory pick next year, although we've been kind of kicking the can doing that the last couple seasons and not being able to sign um, some people looking for big money in the third round. So um, it might be time to actually just get somebody into our system who can help us. So I'm going to dig a little deeper, um, you know, search some of my other screens, um, see if there might be a hidden gem here that we can um, pick in the third round, um, given that I'm not really too excited about the players that our scouting director is most excited about at this point. And the pickings are pretty slim here late in the third round. Um, Alvaro Mandesir, um, left fielder, um, just doesn't have any power and has a horrible eye. He's never going to walk, never going to hit for much power. Looks like he'd be a decent contact hitter, but a below average outfielder, not that exciting. I was interested in Manny Avalos here. Um, looks like he can play any infield position. None of them particularly well, but could be a utility um, infielder, certainly. And profiles, if everything comes together, is a decent bat. Um, issue is he's impossible to sign with unknown bonus demand already committed to Ohio State so he's probably going to be looking for like nine million dollars plus to sign. Um, we've already talked about Barreto who's looking for five and a half but I would take that over the impossible to sign Manny Avelos. Uh, Tony Lax, left fielder, um, below average defensively maybe could be a slightly above average offensive player, um, but his bonus demand is at least reasonable. Um, I'm kind of trending in that direction. When I looked through the pitchers, there was just not a lot out there at all. Bill Rios, a shortstop prospect, um, also signable. Um, not great defensively, but could at least fill in for you at just about any any position in the infield, but you really wouldn't want to play him anywhere. Kind of profiles, I think, best as a third baseman, but um, not great anywhere. Um, 
good contact hitter, but just not a lot of power. So not all that exciting. Do like that he is durable, but he's also 21 years old. Um, right now I'm just searching on, on contact potential. Um, searched on power potential earlier. You know, not a ton there. Guzman, who we had mentioned already. Mike Hill, who uh, just has a brutal personality and um, is not that good of a defensive catcher. Um, and then Ruben Masumi, um, good leader, looking for a million and a half dollars. Best case scenario, he's kind of an average-ish offensive player, and he is uh, pretty brutal defensively. He's got a cannon for an arm, but um, that's about all you can say positively about him defensively. And then the only other 60 power player, uh, right fielder Luke Stevenson, who's an interesting-ish prospect. Again, best case scenario is he's he's kind of an average-ish major league hitter. Um, looks like he's an outfielder. Um, supposedly can play first base, but he's only 5'11", so that's uh, definitely not optimal. Um, just not excited about any of those guys. So um, I think I am going to end up... Um, going here with Tony Lax. Is that who I said I was going to do? I know it was one of the outfielders. Yeah, it's not any of these other guys. Can tell that I'm not all that excited about it. Your I mean, normal monotone is droning on here for you to listen to, but it's probably even less enthusiastic than normal with uh, this crew of players to pick. Um, I guess Bill Rios would be the other option. I do kind of like the defensive versatility there. Um, just not going to be much of a hitter. And he's 21 years old, at least with Lax. Um, he's young enough as an 18-year-old that maybe he, uh, maybe he gets trained up well and has some breakthroughs in our minor league system and, and becomes a little better than we expect. So we are going to go with Tony Lax here in the... Third round, second pick of the third round. If we do anything else interesting over these final rounds of the draft, I will let you know. But um, there's not even really any um, pitchers who profile as better batters or batters who profile as better pitchers at this point. So I think it's going to be a um, pretty unexciting draft for the Royals the rest of the way here in 2030. And in the fourth round here, Edgar Luna, who our scout's been suggesting we take uh, for our last couple selections, is still around. As I've talked about, don't really love him, but he is a high schooler, although he's almost 19 years old. We'll go ahead and um, we're going to only offer him slot instead of his demand. He probably won't sign for that. We'll probably have to give him another 110 grand to get him signed. But uh, we'll finally throw a bone to Travis Lee and sign the guy that he's been suggesting we sign for... Uh, for the last couple of picks. And our Royals have been playing well here in the days after the draft, won three in a row, up by six on the White Sox at this point, and have some uh, good news right now in that uh, Gordon Graceffo is back and healthy, so we are gonna send him down to Omaha for a rehab assignment. He has been out for over a month at this point, so wanna give him a little bit of a uh, probably two, two games down there before we bring him back up to the major league level and um, have to start making some decisions around both him as well as uh, Bruce Zimmerman, who was our Rule 5 acquisition, one of our Rule 5 acquisitions last year that um, hurt himself in spring training. Um, now, as you can see, has been rehabbing in Omaha for about a week and a half at this point, and uh, we will have to make a decision on him in early August. Presumably, we'll have Graceffo up on the major league team probably in about a week and a half or so. I'd like to see him get maybe two starts down in Omaha, just make sure he's healthy and kind of uh, hopefully has most of his endurance back and is ready to kind of go five, six plus innings at the major league level. So we'll give him a couple of starts to um, shake off the rust a little bit in Omaha before we have to make a decision about uh, who we're going to be sending down to AAA to uh, open up the roster spot for him. And we did get Mackenzie Gore to sign to that uh, three-year deal, averaging $5.7 million a year that we had averaged him, uh, that we had offered him uh, just less than a week ago in game time. So uh, 
good to have him at least locked up for next year at a reasonable level. Um, he is someone who over the course of his major league career has been a solid pitcher for us. 115 ERA plus 94 FIP minus, um, you know, he has been uh, up and down in the minors a little bit more than I'm sure he would prefer um, at times over the last few years. But with the attrition that we likely have coming to our pitching staff next year, um, I think it's good that we at least have Mackenzie Gore locked up at a reasonable level for the next three years. And with our draftees starting to sign over the last few days, um, we've been spending a little bit of time reorganizing our farm system, trying to ensure that uh, we don't have too many players on the different rosters and that the players that we really like and want to get play have get playing time are getting playing time. Uh, we are going to, I think, promote Angelo Vasquez, who was our number one pick um, just over two years ago to AAA. Uh, you can see he's spent uh, 80 games in Double A this year, where he's hitting 331, two homers, 44 ribbies, but he does have 22 doubles. You can see he really profiles as a nice defensive outfielder. Um, potentially, I mean, he's already a pretty good contact hitter, pretty good gap power, and pretty good at avoiding strikeouts, and he kind of is what he is. He's um, never going to walk much and never going to hit many home runs, but... Um, he is definitely an interesting prospect, um, obviously, by the fact we took him in the first round just two years ago. We liked him as a prospect. Um, we are going to promote him up to AAA, and we are going to make sure that we force start him, too. You can see we've got oh, we've got a boatload of outfielders in AAA right now, which is not optimal. Um, but we want to make sure that um, he is getting some playing time. Um, you can see, you know, some guys that have been in the majors, Jackson Chorio, Jason Dominguez, even Elijah Na Lambros uh, down there, Juan Pablo Correa, Henry Ramos, you know, guys who have been um, in the majors at times for us in the past or on the verge of getting in the majors are there. So we've got a lot of decent kind of 4A players in AAA right now in the outfield position, um, but want to make sure that we continue to develop Velasquez. Um, he kind of is pretty close to maxed out in his left field and center field defensive ratings. So I think we're going to force start him at right field over the next um, whatever period of time. Um, probably not the best thing for Jackson Chorio's development that he won't be getting a run in, in right field. But um, hopefully we'll still be getting him some at-bats. Um, but, you know, batting... 182 at the major league level in 2028 and then 208 this year admittedly limited sample size but he has had his um opportunities there and hasn't done much um velasquez definitely at the very least looks like he could be a good fourth or fifth outfielder for us at the major league level next year um the bat may be more of a fifth outfielder because he doesn't have a ton of home run power and he's not going to walk much but when you look at the glove, he's kind of a perfect potential fourth outfielder, left-handed hitter who could hit for a decent average up at the major league level. So um, probably not going to be the starter for us. While we got Luis Jose in tow, who made his first all-star team this year, and we're paying a lot of money to. But Luis Jose, as we learned last year, is also fragile and gets banged up a lot. So I think that um, kind of accelerating Velasquez's development and... Um, you know, he could obviously play a good defensive center field if um, Jose gets hurt. Um, but it looks like he can pretty much play a good defensive any outfield position and uh, has enough of a bat that I would expect that he could be one of the players um, up on the major league roster. Certainly next season, possibly when we get to September call-ups this year and uh, certainly has a potentially big role for us uh, next year if we do lose some of the um, key players on our team, which is certainly possible this offseason. If we go into rebuilding mode, um, I think Velasquez would be a potentially interesting player for us to be one of those um, that we're using to build around. 
And perhaps in the least surprising news from an injury perspective, who anyone who has uh, watched my previous playthroughs, uh, Mackenzie Gore um, suffered a sore elbow injury right after we signed him to a uh, three-year contract, of course. Seems like it's just going to be a moderate impact, but it is going to impact his throwing for a week. Um, just to be cautious, we are going to put him on the 15-day IL because Graceffo actually went eight innings in his first start in AAA, uh, was pretty darn good, got the W, um, only allowed five hits and struck out six, although he did give up a dinger and, and allow four runs, so uh, probably gave up a grand slam among one of those five hits, but he pitched 104 pitches five days ago, so he is pretty much... Um, looks ready to go at the major league level. So we'll bring up Graceffo to take Gore's spot on the roster, and I'm assuming that Graceffo will take uh, Will Goble's spot in the rotation. But let's see what um, Byron Nichols has to say. Yep, that's exactly what he did. So Graceffo slots back in as our number three starter. Um, I don't think his contract demands would have changed much. Um, we did pick him up in the trade when we traded away our longtime closer, Austin Roberts, last year. Um, thought that he profiled as an above-average pitcher, even though he had been kind of average-ish over the course of his major league career. And he has been above average with us um, through 73 innings with a 129 ERA plus and an 86 fit minus. So um, the hope was that with a good defense behind him, playing in a pitching pitchers type park like uh, Kauffman Stadium that he might produce a little more than he had in the past and he has done that so far but he's still looking for 15 million dollars a year for five years which for a, a guy who's going to be 31 years old next season um, seems a little much for Kansas City um, at least right now we're not going to pro preemptively and proactively sign him to that type of contract when we get to the off season and kind of see where we stand with people like Spencer Bauer, with what Bobby Witt decides to do, um, you know, then we can potentially start thinking about what our team looks like next year. But um, right now, I don't think it's the right time to sign Graceffo for that kind of money. And you can see here, as we begin the last full week in July, the Royals have been playing really well. 8-2 and two record over our last 10. Um, we've stretched the lead on the White Sox in the division to 9.5 games. Royals at this point are the only team with a winning record in the Central. And we are now only half a game behind the Red Sox for the best record in the American League. Um, of course, we're only a game and a half up on the Mariners um, to kind of avoid... <laughs> avoid that first round playoff series so our goal is definitely going to be to put ourselves in position to hopefully have the best record in the al if not we certainly want to have one of the two best records in the al so that we can uh, guarantee ourselves that we're not going to have to be playing in that wild card series so we'll see how the next week goes and then um we'll start thinking about whether we want to um make any trades is where you get right up against the trade deadline And right after I may have um, kind of tempted fate by talking about Mackenzie Gore signing him to a long-term contract and he suffered a minor injury, was talking about uh, Luis Jose being injury-prone not too long ago. And um, the first-time All-Star is now out for four to five weeks with an elbow strain. So um, we knew he was going to be tough to keep on the field when we we traded for him from the red sox a season and a, half, a year and a half ago um love his defensive abilities in center field you can see he won two gold glove awards with the red sox before he came over to us um hopefully we will have him back for the playoff push looks like we'll likely have him back late august early september but um obviously he's going on the injured list right now and that is going to um Give us a little bit of a decision to make. Um, we do not, I believe, have someone we're going to love playing in center field on the Major League roster right now. You know, Junior Marin can play there if we have to, but uh, not optimal. Marin hitting 249 this year with 15 homers. Sal Frelick has played center for us in the past. Again, 
not optimal to have to play him there. I assume that's what Nichols would do. Frelick hitting 277 uh, with 24 steals for us this year. 104 OPS plus, 106 WRC plus. A little bit of a down year for him. He's also a fragile player. And then Fabrizio Valera, who we picked up uh, on that trade from the Brewers, um, has not um, followed up his all-star season last year with um, a really good year this year, batting just 203 with does have 10 homers and 192 at bats but we knew we had good home run power but you know kind of looking at his batting profile the um 270 and 261 batting averages that he had put up the last two years in milwaukee seemed seemed a bit high um you know probably really kind of a 240 ish type hitter um so hopefully that means he'll play better for us at the in the coming weeks with potentially a little more playing time but again not an optimal defensive center fielder so i think we need to um bring up somebody from from triple a who can play that position for us defensively at least at a decent level um, we were obviously just talking about Angelo Velasquez not too long ago. He's only played four games in AAA. He did hit 438 in those four games. Um, would be interesting to bring the 21-year-old up, but he's the number 97 prospect in baseball. He would be the best defensive center field option we have, so that is certainly on the table. The other option is Jason Dominguez, who has obviously been up with us in the past. Um, also a solidish defensive center fielder. Batting profile, just not great at this point. He's also fragile, um, has been up a little bit this year, hasn't hit, hitting just 238 in AAA. Um, I know it sounds weird, but I'm, I think I'm kind of inclined to bring up Dominguez. Um, I don't know if that's the right move or not. Obviously, it's it's for four or five weeks. It's not the end of the world either way. I guess we could just see what Vasquez can do at a major league level. Um, I mean, you look at him, other than when he got out of rookie, you know, he batted just 259 in rookie ball in 108 at-bats after we picked him in 2028. Since then, he has just gone crazy through the system, hit 368 in A-ball, in 353 in high A ball last year, and then 331 in double A and 438 in AAA this year. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm waiting for. I kind of know what we have with Jason Dominguez, and um, we're going to put the 21 year old after only four games in AAA, bring him up to the majors. We are going to force start him. I'm assuming he would um, probably be our starter anyways when Nichols looks at the team, but we are going to make sure to force start him in the center field. Let's see what else Nichols wants to do with the lineups there. And Velasquez is going to be batting ninth against righties and eighth against lefties, but let's see what he can do over the next few weeks. Um, he could potentially be an important player for us come uh, playoff time, especially if we have some injuries. As I talked about, like the defensive versatility, and we actually did bump him up a little bit in his ability to play right field just in those four games in AAA. So um, obviously there will be time next year in spring training if we want to get him completely trained up as a right fielder. But he would also pick up that pretty quickly at the major league level given his skill set. So um, Velasquez over um, the last four days has gone from a AA player to... Um, starting center fielder for us in the major leagues for the guy who we picked uh, 22nd in the draft just a little over two years ago. And the Royals kind of not playing as well, 3-7 and seven in our last 10, lost three in a row. Our lead over the White Sox is down to 6.5, and, and we um, now at this point both the Red Sox and the Mariners have better records than us, so even though we are poised to be a division winner um, we would unfortunately have to play a wild card series so um, definitely going to spend some time taking a look and seeing what's available on the trade block from other teams and see if there is potentially potentially some talent that we can add we don't have a ton of ability to take on um, salary right now but I'm sure if we put a right package together we can um, 
we can structure things or send some salary back in return to hopefully improve our team for this playoff push um, if we find a guy that we want to bring on board. In thinking about what we might want to bring on board, uh, you can see we are still first in the AL in runs allowed, uh, first, second, or third in almost every pitching category, um, second in both of the defensive categories, um, and we're more kind of um, upper upper half of the league. Um, I don't want to say middle in the pack because we're fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh in a lot of the um, batting categories. Team does not walk very much, but also at least does not strike out much. Lead the league in steals, which we have done uh, pretty regularly over the last several seasons. Uh, but we're seventh in the AL in runs scored. So um, finding someone to bolster the offense is probably preferable. Um, you can look at the team and how we've done a uh, winning record in March and April, 500 in May, a excellent June at 18 and 9, and then just a little bit over 500 here in July. So definitely could use a um, little boost to the offense. Looking at our lineup, um, could definitely upgrade from Ricardo Cabrera at second base. Um, obviously, we traded away our buddy um mr kin uh, a couple of months ago actually we should see how he's doing whether he has really just completely fallen off the earth or um whether he is um doing any better with the rockies his profile still looks uh pretty mediocre to me and he's hitting just 219 in 21 games since he went over to the Rockies. So um, it still looks like this is just a player who was off to an incredible start in his career and um, just does not remember how to hit the baseball the way that he used to. Um, too bad that uh, that happened, but glad we were able to get out from under him. But Cabrera has taken over for him at second base. Hitting just 207, you know, my preference is, is probably that Cabrera is not an everyday player on this team. Would feel a little better if he was a um, utility infielder for us. Um, obviously not going to change uh, Bobby Witt Jr. at third base. Hitting 292, 16 homers, 55 ribbies, 27 steals, 135 OPS plus in a 4.6 war already for us here in late July. We're not going to move on from Tim Anderson at shortstop, hitting 330 for us with a 136 OPS plus. Great clubhouse presence. And then, you know, kind of at first base, Peyton Williams and Alex Vasquez have been splitting time there. Um, we could move on from Peyton Williams. Just check in at what Vasquez has done. Um, Slow down a little bit, but still hitting 286 with 16 homers, 68 runs driven in, and 37 doubles here in his uh, rookie year, putting up a 144 OPS plus. So Vasquez um, definitely doing everything that we would have hoped that he could do. So I guess we could look for a second baseman. And then I think we could always look for an upgrade in the outfield. Um, right now, Frelick, Velasquez, and Marin are our starters. Um, Marin um, was once a big prospect in our system, but he's 26 years old now. He's got the good home run power, um, but you know, kind of an average-ish hitter besides the good pop. So there's a spot for him, but we could certainly have you know someone hit better than him. And then Frelick, you know, profiles is a bit above average offensive player, even though he doesn't have great home run power. Has the speed, um, led the AL in steals last year with 47. Um, let's see what Velasquez has done. Yeah, not quite the same face in Major League Pitching. Obviously an extremely small sample size, but just uh, one for his first nine, although he did drive in a run, and he's only struck out once. So um, certainly not going to move on from him immediately, but, um, you know, not unexpectedly. The 21-year-old uh, with just four games in AAA is struggling a little bit, at least initially, at the Major League level. Um so I tend to think we'd be inclined to maybe look for a second baseman, maybe look for an outfielder with a bat. Um, Luis Rodriguez, since we brought him onto the team as our backup catcher, hitting just a buck twenty-nine. Um, 
you know, I guess we could look for a backup catcher, but that's, you know, not a huge need, not someone who's going to play off. And MJ Melendez just hasn't hit well this year, 191 with just 10 home runs. Love the personality, um, love him defensively. But if um, Bobby Witt Jr. opts out of his contract, um, that could leave us with an interesting decision on MJ Melendez because we've got a team option for him at $12 million next year when he's going to be 32 years old. If um, he's a 191 hitter when we get to the end of this season, we're going to have to think seriously about whether we want to exercise that option or not, even though um, he's been an important player that we've uh, built around, quite honestly, with Bobby Witt Jr. over the uh, eight and a half closing in on nine seasons that we've been doing this playthrough. And there are some interesting bats available, um, some big names, Brandon Nimble, Nimmo, Gabriel Arias, Javi Baez, Seth Bear, Alec Bohm, former Royal. Um, so there are some guys with decent bats out there. There are also some guys making some pretty big money too. Aaron Judge, um, wrecked physically, is actually out there. What does he look like at this point? He's playing with the Mets. Come on. Uh, looks like he had been pretty good with the Mets, um, but he's just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, wrecked physically, um, making $23.8 million. Um, don't know that that bat at this point in his career would help us all that much, but um, you know, if we get someone to hang on to contract, maybe there's someone who could um, play corner outfield for us, and certainly Gabriel Arias or Javi Baez, I would think... Um, those guys are both shortstops, but they could certainly play second base for us. Um, although neither of them has played that position at the major league level. Wouldn't necessarily want to train them to do that at the major league level, but um, Arias actually could play third base, obviously, very well. It would be weird for us to move Bobby Witt Jr. to second base, but I think that that would probably be the best defensive move initially. But, you know, not a great bat um you know has been a below average ops plus and wrc plus player over the course of his career so the the reason to bring him on board would be simply to upgrade our defense which isn't a, a huge need if we were going to bring a second baseman on board i'd like a little bit more of a bat um javi baez doesn't really fit that profile either so um We'll do some digging, also just kind of taking a look at the pitchers who are out there. Um, again, pitching, not a great need for us, but uh, Luke Murphy, closer here. Um, Aaron Knoll is injured, diagnosis pending, doesn't sound good. D.L. Hall, radial nerve decompression surgery, so people just looking to find someone to dump those contracts. Garrett Crochet, who is a big-time pitcher for the White Sox, um, Still a, still, I mean, he's still been very effective this year, actually. Uh, he's not a starter anymore. Actually, he was only a one-time All-Star, but I think he was, uh, he was up there in the Cy Young Award voting a couple times, I thought. Um, let's just look at his stats. I felt like, yeah, the year they led the league, 14 wins, led the league in ERA. Um, he definitely was up in the Cy Young voting that year. Um would be an interesting player to add. Um, again, pitching is not our biggest need. The only guy they want for him straight up is Caleb Lagerwell. We're certainly not going to do that. Lagerwell, only 8-8 eight and eight this year, but uh, 4.07 ERA, 101 ERA plus, just a little above average, but the 84 fit minus and 2.5 and war in 358 Sierra suggests that uh, he's been pitching pretty well for us. Um, so probably going to focus, and we'll just see what Luke Murphy um, obviously would be an incredible arm to add into the bullpen, making $11.5 million. We'd need the Angels to hang on to a big chunk of that. Um, has been a fantastic pitcher over the course of his career with a 146 ERA plus, 79 fit minus. Have a feeling they're going to be looking for may, way more for him than, than we'd be willing to pay. 
yeah, they're looking for uh, big time players straight up. We might be able to put a package together, but um, again, I don't feel like pitching is a huge need for us. Um, would like to do something if if we can't do anything on the offensive players. Uh, maybe we'll come back and look at the pitchers a little bit, but would like to do a little digging here and see if maybe there's a uh, bat that we can bring on board that will be uh, helpful to our offense. There's really nothing too exciting as far as the um, market. Alec Bohm, who was with the Royals back in our first season of this playthrough, um, actually, and then a bit in the second season, 2022 and 2023, um, has been a very average-ish major league hitter over the course of his career. Would be an upgrade defensively at first base over both Peyton Williams and Vasquez and a good presence in the clubhouse so from that perspective there's reason to consider it the other thing is that um there's a lot of guys that they'll take for him we definitely could get a deal done pretty easily even if we don't want to trade one of these guys um there's definitely something we could do to bring him on board um the issue is whether i really want to move on from peyton anderson or not um the other guy um well, let's think about Peyton Anderson first and take a look at him because he would be the guy that I would move on from if we were going to bring Bohm on to kind of shore up our infield defense. Um, obviously, that would push Vasquez into a full-time DH role, which is fine. Um, Peyton Williams has that good home run power, and over the course of his career, he's put up a 118 OPS+, plus, 117 WRC+. Plus. He's been a good offensive player and he's kind of doing what he always does with us this year um just doesn't hit for much average you know 238 career hitter strikes out once every four at bats although i guess in 2022 and 2030 baseball that's not the sin that it was uh several decades ago but um I don't know that, you know, moving on, I think we lose a little bit offensively if we move on from him and br bring bring back Alec Bohm. We obviously get a little bit defensively, but we get a little defense, we get a little bit defensively at first base, which obviously mm -hmm. isn't a critical defensive position. Um, does anyone even want, and is anyone even willing to offer us anything for Peyton Williams at this time? If I could shop him properly, um, that would help. Still pretty slim pickings. You know, I'll take a look at what's out there for him. Um, you know, the fact that we could get um, Bohm for not all that much um, makes me think that if we can get someone with a little bit of potential for the future for Peyton Williams, maybe that's the way to go, but I'm, I'm not sold on it. Yeah, there's not a lot that we're being offered for, for Peyton Williams, um, so I don't know. It seems like we're kind of making a move just for the sake of making a move um, to move on to Alec Bohm from Peyton Williams. Um, like I said, we get better defensively at first base, but other than maybe left field, that's probably the least interesting position to potentially get better at. So, um I don't know that we're going to do anything there. Um, the other player on the trade block that was interesting is um, Raphael Devers. Um, he's been a really good offensive player over the course of his career, not surprisingly. 123 OPS+, plus, 121 WRC+. Plus. Um, in the final year of his contract with the Tigers, making about $25 million a year, um, would obviously be a really nice bat to add um and he could play first base for us too um and sadly you know he would be an upgrade defensively at first base with those kind of numbers over either vasquez or peyton williams so from that perspective um could bring him on board to um help our offense he could also play you know corner outfield position for us too we'll, we'll kind of leave that up um the issue is when we try to trade for him 
make it work now nothing obviously because we need someone to retain a lot of his contract to make it work will 60 percent even make it work oof yeah you can see we can get a deal for him but we're gonna have to get rid of uh power logger well or bobby witt jr so um there is potential to do something here what if we um i can't imagine that they're gonna have any interest at all in taking on peyton williams but um I guess the question is just whether Peyton Williams even has any value to them. Yeah, you don't want vastly overpaid veterans. Um, I get it. Ooh, he says that. But when we add in Peyton Williams, um, it does give us the opportunity to add, add in somebody else to get this deal done. Ooh, if we can do that. Who's this guy? Padilla? Good work ethic. He's an okay starting prospect. He's never going to be a starter unless he develops that splitter. Ooh, he got hurt 12 days ago too. Radial nerve decompression surgery. Was our third round pick three years ago. Um, hasn't made it out of rookie ball at this point though. And he's coming off of a major injury. Wow. I think we got to do this trade. Um, don't love giving up Padilla. I mean, let me just go back and um, I'm going to spend a little time just seeing if there's anyone else in the system that we'd rather give up. Padilla, I don't think, is ever going to be great and he probably won't ever even make it till the majors, but he's got potential. To, to be a productive player if everything comes together. So I just want to try to give them as little value as possible. And looking through the guys they want in addition to Williams, you know, there's obviously big time players like Vasquez, top prospects in our system like Velasquez, Vinny Tomei, um, Rich Alvarado, who's still a good second base prospect for us, and then a fair amount of pitching prospects. I think, I think Padilla, especially coming off of this serious injury, is is the guy that I'm willing to give up. Um, don't love giving up a, a guy who could be a decent major league starter for a rental, but um, there's no question that. Um, Devers is a better offensive player and a better defensive player at first base than Peyton Williams. And um, we're not going to offer Peyton Williams a contract. We're certainly not going to make him a qualifying offer. I guess there's some, some low probability that we offer him a contract, but we kind of upgrade our team offensively at first base because he'll be playing first base every day, and that will not only push Peyton Williams out of the lineup, obviously, because he won't be on the team anymore, but Vasquez will become our full-time DH. Endeavors presumably would play first base against both lefties and righties, um, and he's definitely better defensively than either of those guys. He's not a great defensive first baseman, but um, he's got a better bat. We're trying to improve the offense. I think the question is just how much of the deal we can get them to hold. Um, and they would go up to 70% 70, 70, um, 70 of his salary. Ooh, they'd be over budget, so they're probably not going to be able to throw in any cash with us. Ooh, actually they will. We're going we're gonna to work this for every... Uh, oh, actually, I don't think I pressed enter on that. So yeah, they can't give us cash. Always trying to get every penny that I can. Ooh, and they'll give us $100,000 in addition to holding 70% of his salary. Um, I like it. I don't love losing Padilla. Again, best case scenario is he's an average-ish major league starter, and he's got a lot of improvement that he needs to do to get there. Um, like the fact that he's a lefty, like the fact that he's a homegrown player, but... Um, 
He's a 21-year-old who still never made it out of rookie ball and now just suffered a major injury requiring surgery. So um, I like this deal. Um, Williams was not going to be a big part of our team anyways. Our available money actually improves, um, which, you know, we probably pay a little more attention to the budget and the owner goals than, than some people do. But our goal is to uh, increase our profit, um, so that'll help us a little bit on that goal. Um, and we're making ourselves a little better without, you know, Williams was going to be gone after this year anyways, just like Rafi Devers will be. And, um, Padilla probably was never going to become anything for us. Oh, but now make this work now is not working. What happened? What happened? What happened? Oh. Huh. I guess they'll only take 65%. Hey, we'll still do it. Um, <laughs> we are going to go ahead and complete that trade, bring Devers onto the team. Um, fans a little upset we traded away Williams, but the fans happy that we brought on Devers. Um, so that's probably going to be our big trade. Um, I would have to think so. There's just not a lot else out there, but I think we did. Like I said, we made our offense a little better, and I think we made our defense a little better. And it didn't cost us all that much. It cost us a 21-year-old rookie-level pitcher who um, is coming off of a major major injury. So let's see what the um, lineup looks right now. As I thought, Devers going to be batting cleanup and batting first against lefties, batting fifth and uh, playing first against righties. And that makes Vasquez our... Actually, Vasquez is our DH against righties. Vasquez is out of the lineup against lefties. I do not know how I feel about that. Um, this guy's trying to be rookie of the year here. Why is he not playing against lefties? He's the number four prospect in baseball. He's absolutely raking. He's more of an average-ish batting pro. I mean, he's still an above average batting profile against lefties, but obviously he just completely rakes against righties. So I guess... Um, our team is good enough that uh, they want to play Josh Young. I mean, I guess when you look at the ratings, I guess you can make an argument that Josh Young is a little better of a hitter against lefties at this point. But interesting. Um, I am not going to quibble with what Mr. Nichols says. We'll go with um, what he recommends. But... Um, I like the trade. Would love to hear what people think um, down below in the comments and what you think about all of the rest of our decisions that we've made in this episode. But um, it didn't cost us that much. And um, we've added a big time bat to the middle of our order as we try to um, make a push with this team to, to not just get into the playoffs, but hopefully get a first round bye. And then hopefully after that, end up in the World Series. I guess since we made the trade for Devers and are kind of all in this year, I'm thinking about whether we want to do something to the pitching staff. The pitching's been really good, as I talked about, but um, Aaron Ashby has just fallen off the map, and he's in the last year of his deal. I don't think he's going to have a ton of value, but at least going to shop him around and see. Yeah, we can get something for him, but any minor leaguers? Not really. Um, Noah Lewis is a right-handed starter. He looks like he's probably actually more useful to us than Ashby is at this point. Although he's making a lot of money going forward, that's why the A's want to get rid of him. Um, I don't know that there's anything that exciting that we're going to get for him. Um... But we could, you know, we could we could obviously just cut him if we needed to. But I feel like our, our lefty, we, we need another lefty in the bullpen. Um, we've got Bosman in our starting rotation. We've got Ashby, who's not that good anymore. And then we've got Will Goble. Um, so we've only got two lefties in the bullpen right now. Now that's because of injuries, um, because we've got Mackenzie Gore out with that sore elbow. Um, only going to be injured for another couple days, but it's going to be another week plus till he can come off the IL 
and then we lost another bullpen lefty, Will Bryan, to that fractured elbow. He's gone for the year. Um, so an upgrade with an, and then we do have um, we do have Bruce Zimmerman, another lefty who we picked up in the Rule Five draft down in AAA. So I think um, I think we're probably going to move Zimmerman onto the major league roster and then move on from Ashby. Um, but the question is whether that would that would keep us with only one lefty in the rotation and then two lefties out of the bullpen. I guess we will have a third lefty in the bullpen, hopefully by the first or second week in August when we get Gore back. Um, so I guess we don't have to just focus on only trading for a lefty pitcher, um, but I guess that would be the preference. Um, looking at the best guys out there um our old buddy will klein who we traded away to the cubs last year still pitching well he's available garrett crochet who we talked about as a lefty i just think they're going to want too much for him yeah we got to give another one of our big pitchers to bring him on board so that doesn't make sense I mean, Luke Murphy would obviously be the impact arm. Um, he has been brilliant over the course of his career with the Angels. In the last year of his deal, they're just looking to get something for him. But the problem is the something they're looking to get for him right now is uh, still a lot of something. You know, players who would, would hurt our, our roster significantly in terms of the rotation or the lineup to get rid of him. Um, I can't imagine that um, throwing in Aaron Ashby is going to move the um, needle at all. Actually, it moves the needle a little bit, though. He's got a little bit of value. All right, so we'll put Ashby in the deal, and that opens up a few other players that we could potentially move on from. Laziosi is a decent prospect, um, scouting discovery from a few years ago. Only hitting 262 in A ball, but still profiles as a potentially decent bat who can play. He can play any position in the infield. Not necessarily great, but I don't don't necessarily want to get rid of him. Um, yeah, they're still looking. Ooh. Luis Rodriguez, the backup catcher. He hasn't hit it all for us. I mean, if we can get up a pitcher that we want to cut and our backup catcher to bring on the best pitcher available, we have to we have to do that, right? I mean, we've only had Luis Rodriguez here for a, exactly a month. We we traded um Traded with Colorado for him back on the 29th um, when we, we shipped off Kin. And he obviously hasn't hit much for us. I think he's a better player than that. You know, I like the the offensive profile of him. And over the course of his career, he's been a pretty close to league average type hitter at the major league level. So I have no doubt that he's going to hit better for us. But only a 50 ability and 55 arms. So he's not great defensively does have an option year left so there's some value there but i feel like we've got down in triple a um you know we have caldera who is who we sent down when we made the trade so he could certainly come back up and play catcher for us backup catcher and then uh ooh, interesting yeah i was looking for uh Angelo Bolden, who's now hurt. Um, mild hamstring strain day to day. You know, this is one of the top prospects in our system, a number one pick back in 2025, who would be likely to take over for MJ Melendez. He's hitting 260 in AAA. Um, hurt right now, but he very well could be up before the end of the year. But I think we, we've got to make this trade. I mean, we're giving up a backup catcher and a pitcher that we want to get rid of for a 
great bullpen arm that we don't have to make a long-term commitment to. Let's see how much of their salary we can get him to get the Angels to retain. Oh, I love this deal more and more, especially as they're keeping the money. Oop. Can't get him to keep all the money, but um, I mean, the fact that Rodriguez is a he, he could be a starting catcher in the majors for some team. Obviously not optimal, um, but he's got a solid bat, and he's respectable defensively. Um, but Ashby's kind of um, he's kind of played out here with the Royals. We've got to make this trade. Um, we're all in on this year. Yeah. Let's do it. Bring on the best pitcher available. Fans are pleased we brought him on board. Gonna have to make some uh, moves to clear out some space. Let's see what our um, fan loyalty or fan interest back up into the 80s from the high 70s. So the moves are positive. We've actually saved some money trading away Peyton Williams with the fact that um, we were able to have um, you know a big chunk of Devers' contract retained, and then obviously. A big chunk of Murphy's contract retained too. So uh, put Murphy right onto the major league roster. And we are going to go ahead and bring up Fernando Caldera back to the majors. I uh, wonder if Murphy's going to go into our closer role over Ricky Venasco, who uh, his 34 saves, but a 5.21 ERA. I kind of hope Murphy does. Let's see what Nichols says. Yeah, he's going to put Murphy into that role. So that gives us a. Um, I don't know if he's an Austin Roberts type closer, um, who is our longtime closer, who we had to trade away because he was making too much money. But uh, he's a pretty good fast simile if he's not. Um, was an All Star for the first time this past season, and now he's the closer for us. So um, I like these trades. I think we've definitely made this team better. Um, hopefully, put him in a position where we'll get a first round buy. And um, yeah, we're going for it. And we didn't get the lefty arm that we need, but as I mentioned, um, we've got two potential guys coming back. Zimmerman can come back anytime we want from the rehab assignment. Um, he's only got four days left um, there anyways, so uh, we're going to have to uh, make a decision on him very shortly. And then we will have Mackenzie Gore back, so that'll be two lefties that we can add into the bullpen. And when we look at our pitching... Um, Brian Matoyer, Rule 5 guy, 2.66 ERA. Probably keep him around, but Easton Tumis, um, 4 ERA for us in 18 innings pitched. We could definitely, I don't know if he's, eh, he's 26, so he probably still does have options. Yeah, he's got three option years left. We could easily send him down. He's a pretty generic um, right hander out of the bullpen um do like his potential as a starter and we'll likely be bringing him back um given that he's arbitration eligible and we could be losing both bauer and graceffo out of the rotation so he's got a spot on our team more likely next year but we could send him down if we needed to um jack wiesenberger has pitched uh, pretty well for us again this year um wyatt wendell will probably be the first one who goes down um has done okay for us this year, 3.24 ERA over 25 innings, but his whip is 1.48. Um, he's in his last option year. You know, there are generic kind of relievers that we can send down to open up spots for those lefties. So I kind of like the way we're positioned. Um, I think that's all we're going to do as we head um, into the last couple of days before the trade deadline. We'll see if these um, moves to add Murphy and Devers can kind of... Uh, jumpstart this team that hasn't been playing as well over the last week or so. Not playing any better. Lost four in a row. We're still up by five and a half games here at the trade deadline. And I think... Um, got a double header against Chicago. Whew. Um, so they could theoretically be three and a half games behind us by the end of today. Um... But I don't think we're going to make any more moves. Um, we haven't given up anyone real painful, and we've added two players that really improve our team, which was already the best team in the division. I think we'll play better, hopefully, down the stretch. Um, 
we're still going to be getting, as I talked about, Mackenzie Gore back. Hopefully we'll have Luis Jose back in a bit. Um, let's finish off today, see how those games against the White Sox went. Um, and we won both of them. So uh, we're obviously past the trade deadline now, so I wasn't going to be able to do anything about it anyways. Um, but definitely feel good taking the doubleheader against the White Sox. Um, now we're seven, uh, seven and a half up. Kind of stopped the bleeding of that four-game losing streak that we had. And um, we are at the beginning of the August. We are beginning of August, not the August. We are past the trade deadline. And... Um, in our next episode, we will um, play out the rest of the season, see how August goes, see who we bring up when we get to uh, September roster expansion, and see if the Royals can not only hold on to win the AL Central, but hopefully um, get past either the Red Sox or the Mariners to have the first or second best record in the American League and avoid a... Uh, wild card series hopefully the uh the additions that we made at the trade deadline will help us do that so until our next episode thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day